you need to commit to each other. You know, so many times people think, and especially with this fast paced world and these apps and you're swiping left or swiping right. right, you know, people think the grass is greener on the other side. The grass is greener when you water it. I've been married 16 years now, and oh, I wish I had Relationship Grit, the book, 16 years ago, okay? I think the number one question we get at Mommy Millionaire is how do I do this thing, go build my dream out when I have an unsupportive spouse? You know, that is definitely, there'd be a lot of questions in there that I would ask because that's a difficult one. And I think the biggest thing that I see with couples that I feel like if they can get over this hurdle, they can they can go on to have a beautiful relationship. And the reason we wo- we wrote Relationship Grit is because we were not on the same team. Like we got, we fell in love and we had our children and it just got rocky right away. I mean, it was an up and down with our fighting, with where we were in the relationship financially. I mean, he was an entrepreneur and let me tell you, there were times we had a lot of money and there were times we lost everything. It was, you know, always up and down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of stress in that, right? Mm Mm-hmm. You know, I think, and in the book, I do talk about this, but it's the G-R-I-T framework. It's the grit framework because grit's not just the word in the title of my book. It's also the acronym, which is an action plan. And the G stands for God. And so the first part of that is to bring God into your relationship. And, you know, I know that for a lot of people, you know, they're, they're all at different places spiritually, you know, but God is not a religion. God is a relationship. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is a fascinating study that I just found out about, and I had to research it and Google it. It's a Gallup research poll. You ready for this? I'm ready. 99% of couples that pray together stay together. Ooh. That just gave me chills. 99%. Couples that went to church together, there was no difference in those who stayed together and divorced. Wow. But praying together. So what is that? That is ongoing. It's about working on your relationship ongoing. And that's the R, which is the resolve. So the the G is God and the R is resolve. But I want to go back to the G because... Anybody who hasn't read my book, and they may not have, in, in the book, I talk about where John actually shared that early on in our marriage. He shared this with me 14 years after we were married. But early on when, he first, when we first got married, he had been unfaithful. And that he felt like now that he was a Christian, he really felt like it was something between us. Somehow or another, because they didn't have intercourse, he felt like I really wasn't going to react the way I did. <laughs> but I wanted to kill him and I wanted to cheat on him. And it was a whole thing. And he really fought for us. He really did. And I was definitely going to divorce him. He ended up flying on, he flew for work. He was a speaker, he still is. And he sat next to this man he did not know and ended up pouring his heart out. I cheated on my wife. You know, I told her she wants to leave me. And the guy said, you know what? Something very similar to that happened to me in my own marriage. And we came up with a prayer. I I came up with a prayer and it's a prayer we say every night. And so John came up with a prayer and he would say this prayer, Kayla, every single night. I wasn't about to say it with him, right? I was just Mm. so (laughs) upset and angry. But, you know, after a while, when you keep hearing it, I started to memorize it, but I wasn't about to say it out loud. And then one night we were laying in bed and I reached for his hand and I ended up saying the prayer out loud with him that night. And I knew that that was the night that I had decided to forgive him, right? That I had resolved. Makes me want to cry. Yeah. 
that I had dis- resolved to stay in the marriage. And, you know, so you're going to have ups and downs. It's going to be hard, mm. but you need to commit to each other. You know, so many times people think, and especially with this fast paced world and these apps and you're swiping left or swiping right. right, you know, people think the grass is greener on the other side. The grass is greener where you water it. Right. Right. So, you know, you really have to resolve to stay in your relationship and work on things. And my only caveat to that, to that I always say is now barring any physical or emotional abuse, that is, that's different. That's, that's a whole other situation. I'm not encouraging you to, you know, resolve to stay in that, but you know, for, for the most of us, it's just, you're having issues. There's, there's a, a struggle going on. And so the prayer, he would say that prayer, the prayer changed our life. And so it wasn't that we said this prayer once, right? It was that we said it ongoing and that's the resolve and that's the investing. So that takes us into the I, which is invest. So then once you're there, you can't be a consumer in your relationship. You Mm. have to be an investor and it could be small sacrifices, right? Small little investments. And I like to to say it like this. Think about it like this. You want to be healthy, right? Yes. Do you just do you just say I want to be healthy? No. You invest in your health. You go Absolutely. to the gym. You work out. You meal prep. You eat healthy foods. You have to invest in your health and your body to be healthy and have a great shape, right? Be healthy. Same with our relationships, right? Give me some examples of what it looks like to invest in your marriage. Okay. As I said, is a speaker. And so he travels a lot for work. I will be, I'm not kidding you, like out washing the dog. You know, I'll be doing so. It doesn't matter. If he's packing, he has got to have my input on what he's going to wear. And I always know, honey, I'm like, oh, here we go. Kayla, he has literally the same five sports jackets and the same eight shirts he's had for years. They all match. I'm telling you, but I know that it means so much to him for me to take the time to walk back into the closet and he'll hold up the jacket and he'll hold up. There's always two shirts. He'll put one. You like that? You're going to look so handsome. It's, I'm not kidding you. I literally could have Polaroids. I told him that same exact outfit looked good like three weeks ago. But for him, he gets this big, it's a small investment, right? It's just something little that Mm -hmm. I will do for him that, that means everything to him. You know, and so it's not these doesn't have these big things like, you know, it's not always like I moved to another state for their job. You know, those are big investments, but just little things, even littler. You pull up with groceries. You see that she's put your wife's pulled up with groceries. Stop what you're doing and go out and help her with the groceries. You'd be surprised how many men don't do that. Right. So just, yeah, small investments. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So John Gottman did a study. Couples that make time for each other, even small amounts of time, are 85% more likely to stay together. So that's the final T, right? In grit. That was I. The R is resolve. You know, decide that you're going to stay on your, Mm -hmm. stay in your relationship and work on things, even when things aren't going well. And then the I is to invest in your relationship, right? So many times we invest in our friendships, our coworkers, right? You, you have a team, you're probably investing in them, but make sure you make your spouse or your partner number one. And the other part of that is the T, which is together. You have to both do it, but it doesn't mean you always have to do it equally. So it's not about keeping score, okay? The T can also mean mm. team. Remember that you're on the same team. And I think that that's interesting because, you know, the women listening in right now, they're listening to Mommy Millionaire because they want to, you know, make more money. And that's the ultimate reason why they're listening in, right? And so many of them cannot get on the same page with their finances. And I know you talk about this in your book, like if you're on different 
you know, if you're on different pages with finances, that's a huge downfall in so many relationships. How do you come together if, if you're, you know, on different ideologies when it comes to finances? So one of the first things I think I would tell a couple is sit down and talk about your vision for the future. You know, what do you see yourselves doing or having for the future? What is your shared vision? Do you both, you know, want to make a certain amount of money? You know, do you want that, you know, and listen, you're going to have different things. Like I love the mountains. John Gordon does not like the cold, right? So, you, well, there's going to be some differences, but you know, if you make enough money, I can still go to the mountains, <laughs> right? It's okay. And so it's about having a shared vision. What I find so many times, Kayla, is, you know, I think couples, because of stress, they start attacking each other. And so sometimes you really have to catch yourself in that. And you may need to be the first one that, that does something different. And let me explain a little bit about that. So when John was traveling all the time, I was home raising the kids. So I would say I raised the kids. And he came into the kitchen one morning. We were running late. You know, the kids, and if, I'm sure you can relate to this. The minute we were running late, my son would not speed up. He would slow down. And my blood pressure would speed up. So, you know, it wasn't always just about, you know, just the activities. I, you know, it's, it's about dealing with the personalities. So this morning in particular, we were running late. I was trying to get the lunches together. My kids were racing. John comes sauntering into the kitchen. And you know what? He looked so handsome. And I did not feel good about myself right then. I had gained some weight. I was looking, I was not looking like I wanted to. My hair was all disheveled. You know, I was still in my nightgown and I looked at him and I had such a pang of jealousy go through me. And you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to cut him down. Like I really wanted to say something to, to cut him down and it hit me. And I was like, no. And I looked up and I go, John Gordon, you look so handsome in that suit. You better watch yourself. Those ladies are going to be <laughs> digging you today. He got the biggest smile on his face, like a kid, right? Yeah. And you know what? It's like all of a sudden this feeling came over me and it made me feel better. And I realized, you know what? I'm not doing that anymore. And so I would do that. I started complimenting. And, you know, it may not have been as easy at first and there were st stressful times, but I started to strengthen that muscle. And the more I did it, the easier it became. And then the more John started doing it, like it started to be a thing, right? And so it was a slow changing of that dynamic because it, you know, I think couples can't beat themselves up for being in that place. You know, it's a really stressful time. I tell couples with young kids all the time, please just hold on. Find ways for you guys to come together as a team because these are the hardest times. And if you can get through this, oh my gosh, your relationship, it'll be amazing. John and I have like an amazing, amazing sex. I'm just going to tell you that. Okay. All of that. The young years are so hard. And so you're both fighting for your time. You're both, if you both are working and heading out to work, it's who's taking care of the kids. And nine times out of 10, who's it fall on? The mama. The mama. Yeah. And so, you know, there's all of that. There's so much. And so it's about, it's about having that strong foundation. So one of the things we did, by the way, we started doing family meetings. And the only thing I regret about family meetings is not starting them sooner. And it's not always easy to do, but we would pick a day. And no, most times it was Sunday afternoon. And John would pick some kind of scripture or some kind of motivational, you know, uh, article. And we'd sit around the table and John would read it. And let me tell you something. It wasn't easy to always get people to sit down. Our, you know, my kids, sometimes it was me. Sometimes I didn't want to sit down. 
but you have to fight for your family. Fight for it. And so once we would, though, some of the most beautiful things came out of those meetings. And listen, sometimes the kids were fighting and yelling, but you know what? My kids will tell you to this day, and now they are 24 and 20, 22, those meetings gave them such a sense of belonging. It really gave them like a sense of confidence and strength. And we now are such a tight knit family. We fight. We're, you know, we're dysfunctional. We're crazy. But I'll tell you what, we are strong. We have a very strong foundation. And I really feel it was from doing those family meetings. And so any couple to kind of circle back around to that, if you're in a place where you're not getting the support that, you know, you really need uh, to go off and do your own thing. So many times there are a lot of underlying things. And number one, I find a lot of times when I start cu- talking to couples is the fear of, of, of them leaving. Like, you know, they're, they're afraid you're going to get successful and not need them anymore. As I've started to talk to a lot of couples who are having problems, I just went on a trip like last month, group of women Two women in the group were now split and heading for divorce. And I'm talking, they were married for like 30 something years. As I started talking to them, both two different situations. But in the end, when we boiled it down, and they were both leaving their husbands, why are they leaving? Ultimately, they didn't feel wanted. Like we all want to feel wanted. You know, we want to feel important. We want to feel desired. That never goes away. I don't care how long you've been together. So, you know, I'd say, you know, take a good mature look at what's happening in your relationship and nobody's perfect. I'm sure whoever is listening to this, even though they say, you know, it's it's just, it's my spouse who's not supporting me. Look at your own behavior. There's probably something in there that maybe you're doing that could change. And you're probably doing that for very good reasons. But at some point, one of you has to be the one to make the decision to do something different to help strengthen your relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm, That's so good. And so what I'm hearing from that is really like if you're in that spot right now, choose to be the person that's going to, that's going to do something different. And I think victims will go, well, he needs to do it because I've been the bigger person for so long. Right. And if that's your story, like you're, you know, like you'll get the exact opposite results of what you truly are wanting right now. And you know, sometimes maybe they have been the bigger person, but if you can really pay attention to what's happening, Mm -hmm. you might see, oh, he's reacting to this because he's jealous or, you know, he wants to be the man and he doesn't, you know, want me making more money. He doesn't want to feel less than, you know, some men love it. You know, my husband would love it if I was making more money, (laughs) you know, but, but that's also because John has done so much work on himself to get to a spot where he understands who he is and whose he is, you know, he has God in his life. And like when I started making way more money than my husband, I mean, this was like 12 years ago, but he was the person who had a problem with it. Like he was, he was so scared. Of course it makes sense. Mm -hmm. And so you, it's, you know, he was thankfully willing to do the work on himself and face those insecurities and say like, what's the worst that can happen? You know, like, am I still going to be okay if Kayla decides to leave me? And he had to get to that point with, yeah, I will be because I'm an amazing person. And then it made our marriage so much stronger because he's not like holding on to me for dear life. Right. And isn't it beautiful when your partner's supporting you? There is really something about that, that, Mm -hmm. you know, it just, it just strengthens your, your love that much more. I want that for everyone listening in. You know, it, it takes a little bit of time and patience, but you know, if it's something you, you really can change. I mean, I am living proof. You absolutely can change the course of your relationship. I, I, I'm not just saying this to plug my book, get my book, because I'm telling you in it, it literally gives the whole 
grit framework, but also in the back, it gives tips, little tips. One of the things I always say is let the best thing that your partner hears about themselves come from you. Oh, right. That gives me chills. But think about it. I can remember being my, with my mom. She would bad mouth my dad. And so I learned that. Mm-hmm. And I realized like, wait a minute, that is not serving. Like I got to be the one that's saying the nice things to my husband. And let me tell you, it's not always easy, right? I mean, I'm not saying we don't, we fight. I'm a fighter. I'm Irish Catholic, right? We're, <laughs> we're going to fight. I like to fight. No, I'm just kidding. But you know what? At the end of the day, you know, we have a very strong foundation. And mm -hmm. so, again, I know if we can do it. Oh, my gosh. I have to read you this letter. This is amazing. Ooh. Okay. I'm ready. So this is going to tell you. This was a huge confirmation for me. So I get this letter from this woman. And she says, Dear Catherine, once I started your book, Relationship Grit, I couldn't put it down, but it did take me two evenings to finish it. I realized that I was in a terrible mood yesterday and I acted out on Jerry today. After a lovely breakfast, I told him that I was going to serve him all day long. He looked at me like I was crazy. He didn't know what I was talking about. I must compliment you on revealing such intimate stories. I certainly can relate in most cases. Your book resonates with love, caring, and commitment, and it will be helping the many, many people who read it. But this is the great part. We celebrated our 67th wedding anniversary on March 6th. I turn 86 on September 22nd, and we will celebrate Jerry's 89th birthday on July 5th. We are truly blessed, and we started to say the prayer that John wrote when we go to bed at the same time. And you know what? I was like, okay, I had to call this woman on the phone. I'm like, can I share this? And she was like, of course. I thought, oh my gosh, if this isn't like the most amazing, like you can be married for 68 years and still change your relationship. Yes, it's never too late. And I'm so thankful that you wrote you and John wrote this book together. I'm sure it wasn't easy. And I know that like right now you're in a new, you're creating a new chapter. Yes, I am. I am what I call, I'm in my second act. Second act. I'm actually got two more books I'm writing. One is on sex and intimacy, Ooh. but not sex. It's not going to be, it's not raunchy at all. It's really, it's, it's, it's really about oneness and, and connection. And it's a, it's going to be beautiful. I've got the outline, but I haven't, written the whole book yet. You know, I'm excited. I'm going to be the first person to buy this because I have had so many issues because of just like trauma and all these things. And I think that people need a book like that, you know, so I'm really, I'm really excited for that. To make it into what it's really, what it really Yes, what God designed be. it to be. Yeah, thank you for sharing that because that kind of confirms some of the things, that, some of the topics and that I that I'm covering in that. Yeah, and so yeah, sex and intimacy, and I don't know what the title of my other one is, but it's just kind of about a little bit about my story, but it's about overcoming. Is that a book deal you got or are you self-publishing or what are well, you doing? You know, because my husband, you know, my husband's written 27 books. Yes. And 15 bestsellers. So Wiley, you know, of course, because of that, of him, I mean, I'm riding on his coattails. They of course will publish anything that I'm doing. You know, we, we hope, right. I'm assuming, right. I think so. So yeah. Yeah. So that's I'll amazing. It, yeah. So okay. I'll do it through Wiley and then I start speaking. So it's funny because I, you know, I was an actress and, and I modeled and did all kinds of things. I had no, I did stand up comedy at one part point. That's a whole, that's the hardest thing I've ever done. But, you know, so I really didn't ever have a problem standing up in front of people. But let me tell you, I don't know what's happened. I got up and I, I so I was like, okay, I'm going to speak. So right after I wrote the book, of course, a lot of groups were asking me to come speak on relationship grit. And I was like, okay, I went and gave my first talk and I gave my talk and I thought I forgot something. And I like totally flipped out on myself. Like they didn't know. 
And I left and I'm like, I'm never doing this again. And so I really didn't do it. I kind of like put it on the side, but God just kept nudging me, you know, like every time John and I would go to these conferences and people would come up that have read the book and I would end up, you know, talking to them, kind of counseling them for two hours. And, you know, I realized like everything that I'm sharing, I probably, it needs to get out there. So yes, every time I'm praying, I'm telling you, God would like nudge me. I'd be like, no, no. And so finally I literally had a dream and it was a dream like, okay, you're speaking now. So I got up, started to say a prayer and I was just like, okay, fine, fine. I got up and went to my phone. I had a speaking engagement, like right then. Like my, I was the weirdest thing. And after I, after I accepted it, I got four more. So look, wow. literally in, from January now to April, I have, there's been five or I'm going to, to Costa Rica to speak to a couples collective. Yeah. This Friday I'm going to uh, Raleigh to speak at an event. So it's been kind of like a, but I'm, I mean, I'm still nervous, right? It's funny. I think now, because what I'm talking about how has so much meaning, I really mm-hmm. want to make sure that I, that I get the message across. So anyway. Well, I think you will, because I, there's something about you that's so real and authentic and that right there, it just makes people, you, it, you have that trustworthy factor that oh, you can't, thank you. you can't fake that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so I think speakers that have that are the ones that impact the most. You have that. So I feel like you can't say the wrong thing, you know, because you're just being you. And then you have also this like vulnerability factor where you're willing to share like a lot of stories that most people would never share. And it's going to help. I, I have chills like right now thinking about it because it's going to help so many people. You're going to save so many relationships. Like God is going to work through you. You're going to be the vessel God works through to restore marriages and to just bring hope back to the home, you know? And so I'm so excited for this new chapter. Thank you for saying that. I want to just call out something that you just said. You know, you said that I, I say things, I say things probably, (laughs) I'm, I'm vulnerable and I share things. Make sure that you are around people who see you. You know, mm. when I was raising my kids, um, I played on a tennis team. I felt really fortunate to have that time to go do that. We had just sold our restaurants, Mo, so I wasn't working again. And I went to play tennis and I really just was having a great time. But, you know, there was a group of women who, you know, didn't honor, like I was very outspoken, I'd say, but you know, when people are very close minded and you have to look a certain way and you have to act a certain way, they're going to push you down. Yes. So you're not going to thrive. And so you need to change your groups, like make sure who you're hanging. If I had stayed in that group, I would not be doing any of the things and they're still doing, and mind you, I'm talking about wonderful people. There's probably five of them that are like really awful, (laughs) you know, like, (laughs) you know, 60 people, there's always just that handful, but they make it bad, you know, because when you're a shining light, people don't like that. Like there are people that they want to put you down. So, you know, make sure that you are around people that are lifting you up. Yes. That is so important. And, you know, I tell my kids that too, like rejection is God's protection right? Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So amen. Oh my goodness. Well, Catherine, I feel like we could talk forever because there's so much, you have so much wisdom, which is what makes me so excited for your podcast because I listened to your podcast and how she was on the show today is how she is on her podcast. You're (laughs) going to get so much wisdom. She interviews some great people as well. So I want you all to check out Catherine for real. Where else can all of our listeners find you, Catherine. Yeah. So my website is catherineforreal.com and I'm on Instagram at Catherine Gordon and anybody's welcome to email me at Catherine at catherineforreal.com. And I think that's it, right? Yeah. I love that. It was so good. We'll make sure to link up everything in the show notes as well. And mommy millionaires, thank you so much for listening into this show. I want you to take a screenshot of this podcast episode. I want you to tag 
both Kayla.craft and Katherine Gordon on Instagram. And I'm going to pick five of you to give away Catherine and John's book, Relationship Grit. So the first five people that tag us, I'm going to give you a book. It's so good. And last but not least, please leave a review of the show if you loved this episode. And I'll see you next time. Thank you, Catherine, for being Thank on. Thank you for having me. Thank you.